Hey everyone, David Shapiro here with another video. Uh, sorry, it's been a little while. This video is about the question generator that I created for uh, my natural language cognitive architecture. And first, I have to sh say like, okay, why do you need a question generator? There's a lot of reasons that you might want to be able to generate questions. Um, the reason that I created it is because natural language cognitive architecture relies on generating questions in order to retrieve the correct memories. But also asking questions is a really great way to decide what to do. Uh, I personally believe that unconscious questions are a big way that humans make decisions. And I have a lot more details about this in my book. I don't need to go into details about specifically cognitive architecture here. There's a lot of other things that you could, you could use when uh, uh, generating questions for. So first, I wanted to show you around the repository. Um, there should be a link below uh, in the video description. So first, um, what I did was I put together a whole bunch of contexts. There are like 55,000 contexts in this folder. You can, you can download them all. They came from open source data sets, so don't, don't hesitate to use these. Uh, if you look through it, you'll probably recognize some of them. And then what I did was I used a few different prompts uh, in order to generate questions. And those questions um, are just like this, just a, a set of questions uh, in response to um, any given passage. And I used a bunch of different kinds of, of, um, of contexts. So there's movie dialogue, right? So you see this, this is pretty familiar. Um, this, is a, this is a really common data set. Uh, I also used, uh, let's see, I used medical text. These are de-identified medical texts. Um, oh, here, let me make it so you can see it all. There we go. Um, so medical texts, which, of course, there's no narrative. It's just information. Um, and I knew that I was onto something when an earlier test, um, GPT-3 deduced that a patient probably had cancer. Um, and it asks, Did this pa does this patient have cancer? And I looked up that particular medical text, and yeah, sure enough, some of the test results indicated the risk of cancer. Um, I also used news articles, um, and then I used Reddit posts, uh, which of course Reddit is um, information seeking. And then finally, I used uh, Stack Exchange posts. And again, these all came from open source data sets. You can search for all of these on Kaggle or Google data sets. Uh, it's all open source, so I didn't, I didn't steal this from anyone. I know that some people are worried about data privacy and data governance. Um, but these are all uh, publicly available data sets. Uh, so I start with those contexts, and then I use uh, several prompts. You can you can look in the um, in the repository yourself, and and check it out. And I use it to generate questions. And these questions, um, you could use it for anything, right? You could use it to automatically generate uh, test questions for reading comprehension, right? You could use you could use these questions for other um, artificial intelligence things. You could use it for chatbots, actually. Even just having a chatbot that asks good questions is a really powerful thing to have, right? So with all that said, uh, you know, just lots of questions. So that was the training set. And finally, what it looked like, um, the finished product, it looks like this. So um, GPT-3 is trained with JSON-L files. Um, and you see here, so there's a prompt. These first ones are some dialogue. And all that you have to do is whatever, whatever payload you want, you, um, you add in all caps questions, colon. That's how, that's how the model knows that it's done. And then you, um, you go from there. So let me show you what actually happens in real time. I think that'll help it make the most sense. So let's go grab a random context from Reddit. Um, just because they tend to be narrative. Eh, that one's a little bit long. Let me grab a shorter one. Okay. This one says, so this context says, I'm 23 and have a BS in biology and a contract job ending soon. What should be my next move? I graduated last year in biology, etc., etc. Okay, so this is someone just asking for some career advice. Now, generating questions, obviously this person is looking for answers, right? But asking questions um, seeking more information is a perfectly valid uh, response, right? Because someone might ask questions because they don't know, um, they, they, they need more information to know how to help, right? 
So we'll put it into GPT-3 and I'll do this to finish it off. Questions, actually you can just do one space and then let's see what it says. Um, it takes a second to load. It actually might have unloaded. Um, one thing that I found with, with uh, GPT-3 is that it takes it a minute to load your, um, your custom models. Um, I'm not, I'm not happy about that. I really wish that, um, it was as fast as, um, as, as the plain vanilla models. Um, but anyways, we'll see if it loads. It might, it might crash and I'll have to come back to it. I'll try it again in a second. Um, yeah. So let's see. Well, while that's loading, I'll show you around the, uh, the repo a little bit more. Um, let's see. Oh yeah, that's what I can show you. Uh, so here's an example of one prompt. I used uh, DaVinci Instruct to create the synthetic data set. I said, write a list of moral and ethical questions an observer would ask about the following passages. And then I did this to generate questions. Um, the questions field, oh, there we go. Okay, it ran. So here we go. So I, I put in this, and because of the fine-tuned data set that I had, um, these are the questions that spit out. What is the next move for someone with a BS in biology and a contract job ending soon? That's a perfectly valid question. Um, you know, it might be grad school. It might be another job. What are the next steps in becoming a researcher or entrepreneur? Uh, what is the most important question to ask oneself when considering going back to school for a master's? What is COVID and what does it do? Um, GPT-3 doesn't know what COVID is because GPT-3 was trained before COVID existed. So these questions could be used for um, either responding to the person or they could be asked internally. So that's how I use it in, um, in natural language cognitive architecture is it asks internal questions because the answers to those internal questions might also be helpful um, in order to uh, help the end user. So yeah, there you have it. That's one example. Um, and while we've got it loaded, let me go ahead and give another one. Uh, let's see, how do I stay positive during the depressing stages of a job hunt? I think this, uh, this, these subreddit or these Reddit posts, uh, almost certainly came from, um, from, a, an academic or, or job, job hunting, uh, subreddit. All right. So let's see what it says here. One thing you'll also notice is, well, I think it took too, I, I let it unload. So it'll take a minute. Oh, there we go. Once it actually does load, it's very fast because these are based on Curie. And Curie is 10 times smaller than DaVinci and, and is therefore very, very fast. Um, okay, so how do I stay positive? Six months ago, I left a job with a major publisher due to unhealthy work environment. I'm a very qualified editor, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so what is the writer's current job title and company? Um, they might be unemployed. Um, what are the writer's interests and hobbies? Is the current job a good fit for the writer's interests and hobbies? Do you think the current job will provide good income? Um, in this case, let's see, did they, yeah, six months ago he left. I knew the position I accepted was only temporary. And this, oh, okay, he is still in a transitional position. All right, I was, I was afraid that it had misunderstood. Anyways, from reading this, it seems he's, he is, he is presently working. Okay. Um, although it's, it's a little ambiguous. So maybe, maybe the, maybe the model didn't pick up on that. Um, but yeah, these are, these are perfectly valid questions to ask, right? Uh, maybe they're not the most salient questions, but this post is also a little bit all over the place, right? But by asking follow-up questions, you can kind of zero in on what someone actually needs. Um, but again, also, you could put anything in this. You could put a, a newspaper article. You can put a Wikipedia article in, and you'll get all kinds of um, all kinds of uh, salient questions to ask. Which you could use them for anything. You can use them for chatbots. You can use them for test questions. Um, and again, uh, this is um, Nauka Question Generator. It's public. It's uh, available to all under the MIT license um, right here, so everyone can use it. Um, and there you have it. There's a perfectly good demonstration of how to, how to, how to use it. Um, the training file is right here. It's the questions.json.l. You can create your own. Um, you can take this. It is ready to go with um, OpenAI's GPT-3. Um, yep, yeah, and I think that's about it. Uh, thanks for watching.